Hey, Wednesday, December 7th here at OIF Dream Center. This is uh, the first week. We're really excited, and uh, we believe God to do great things through this. Uh, no, just the simplest nugget of truth, and that's what we really aim to do, give a nugget of truth. We'll, we'll definitely bless you and take you through your day, and that's our prayer that it goes through the day with you and keeps you from some of the crooked places, that these can make you st- Make your crooked places straight, even here as you listen. I um, encourage you to listen to it in the morning so that can go along with your day. And uh, definitely um, k- keep it with you, carry it with you, and maybe even uh, keep you from some of the things that um, want to take you out. The devil's definitely wanting to take all of us out. And uh, so we want to keep as much of that from happening as we possibly can. Today is Scripture, Wednesday, December 7th. Uh, will be found in Matthew 18, and it'll be 21 and 22. The Bible says in Matthew 18, 21 and 22, it says, Then Peter came to him, talking about Jesus, said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me, and I forgive him? And then asked up to seven times. But Jesus said unto him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times 7. That's a lot of times. I uh, I don't think in one day a person can uh, come and sin against you <laughs> that many times in one day. And I believe that's kind of what Jesus was really illustrating. He was going off of the uh, 7 times question and just adding a, a multiplication to that, multiplying it to a degree that no brother can really sin against you that many times in a day. And so, in other words, we're always to forgive our brothers. Um, trespasses, uh, Paul dealt with the Corinthian church a lot. They were trying to sue each other, taking each other to court, and they were just contentious Christians. And, um, you know, it doesn't really clarify whether they were sincere whether they weren't most probably were some probably weren't Uh, but regardless it was a church that was warring against themselves and a house divided cannot and will not stand we're to forgive our brothers and sisters mothers fathers everyone we're to forgive everyone 70 times 7 a day and probably won't even have to add that up because that's way more than anything that we can possibly have sinned against us all the people in one day put together couldn't sin that much against us and uh look at some of the figures in the bible you know that we see as great and that did great things but yet they had sin in their life david was called a man after god's own heart but yet sent the husband of a lady he had seen from afar off named bathsheba to the front lines in battle so that he can be killed just so she she can sleep with him and uh and that seems so terrible, but he's called a man after God's own heart. And then you go to Peter, denied God three times. After three times before, say, I would die for you. I would be cast in prisons. You know I love you. And yet he became the rock on which Christ built the church. Amen. Uh, Moses, <laughs> he let the anger get the best of him quite a bit. He had a hot temper, a hot head, but yet he is responsible for the Ten Commandments, the first tabernacle, uh, which was the church, you know, a uh, dwelling place for God. Um, he was he was responsible for the ordinances of that and, 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 and being involved in the first uh, church really in a building setting ever created, the tabernacle of Moses, and led Israel to the promised land. Of course, he only saw it from afar off, but he led them to, and Joshua led them through, uh, led them out of Egypt and, and split the Red Sea. We all know the story. Such a great man. And then we go to Paul himself, who martyred Christians, martyred many Christians, and uh yet this this same man was converted and became the light to the gentiles and wrote much of the new testament revealing the mystery of the gospel it was made known to him when he conferred not with flesh and blood so we look at all these men that we consider so great but sometimes we forget that they had sin in their lives too and 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 some of them were grave sins and uh i just i'm reminded of romans 323 it says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We all sin. We all fall short. We all let our sins get the best of us at times. And if we think as we pray to God that we deserve forgiveness, how can we if we don't forgive others? And I believe it's a process, and and uh, we got to be patient with each other in this process. But forgiveness is freedom. 
we free ourselves. Um, Pastor Mike always says here at the Dream Center, the pastor of OIF, uh, he always says, I will not let their sins wound me. I forgive them. I release them. <laughs> you know why? Because forgiveness heals you. It doesn't heal the other person. The other person's responsible for theirs. Forgiveness heals you. And uh, I just uh, don't want us to, to, to become like the older brother of the prodigal son. That older brother, man, he, he really did. <laughs> he really he had a self-righteous way about him. He thought he had earned his place, his right, his everything that the brother got, the ring, the robe, when he comes home and comes to his senses and the feast and, and restored privileges and rights. That older brother thought he should have got some of that. He had never had a feast. He had never. You know what? God chooses what and who he uses. Let's not be pharisaical. Let's not be self-righteous let's not be looking around so much that we forget to see it's us that we need to fix and every second we look to the left or to the right we're wasting time on ourselves, and we're risking the chance of being blindsided by the enemy anyway i want to close with a poem i wrote called merit over matter we all strive to do our best but sometimes dive into a world of mess it brings hurt and pain to many others but we must search the reins of each other we all fall short and make mistakes, but still must support each other with grace. Many tears have fell from our eyes to the ground, and past years do tell that somewhere grace was found. Unwilling to let go of the ones we love, and an eagerness to show, as did our Lord above. Love at times is blind, it feels, and it hurts. But love is also patient and kind, it conceals, and it works. Often taken for granted are the ones we love. Often breaked in and tattered is each other's trust. Life does throw its unexpected blows, but those who stick around when you're down are the ones that are close. So don't worry about tomorrow. Just appreciate today. Sometimes comes pain and sorrow, but come whatever may. We must stick together no matter what's been tattered. Our love should last forever. Merit over matter. Amen. Thank you once again. Tune in tomorrow.